hello. Today we are talking about what I'm reading right now, which I am doing a little later in the month, just because of the way things timed out. But also I've not been reading as much this month. I feel like I've been a little, like slumpy is probably not quite the right word, but I've just been really distracted with life stuff. So I've not been in the mood to read quite as much, but you know, we're two thirds of the way through. I have read 10 things, which is not nothing. And uh, you know, we're getting ready for American Thanksgiving this coming week and we get into the holidays. We're about, to, I'm, oh, I'm very excited because I'm about to start filming all of my end of the year wrap up videos, which is just the highlight of my year. I love doing those. So that's coming in December. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're be bopping along here. Doing pretty good. Oh, I also, I have new merch. Oh, isn't this so cute? I wanted to put some new merch out before the end of the year. I'll put a picture up here, but it is Hastings and Marple, my cats, but like dressed like their Agatha Christie characters. And I just think it's the cutest. I've ordered so much of it already because I love it. But yeah, so that's been fun too. I also have some other books like Woe March, which is based on Penguin Clothbound Classics. It's like an homage to that. So if you're interested in that, check it out. But anyway, yeah, that's just like what is going on with me in my life. And so we'll get into some books that I can tell you about. We'll talk about what I've read, what I'm currently reading and what I might read next. And I think a few of these I probably can't really talk about until the end of the month, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, in terms of things that I'll talk about more at the end of the month. All of these are things that I, I think I give all of these. Yeah, I gave all of these four stars. I really enjoyed all of these. So two surprises I'm going to talk about at the end of the month are The Maid by Nita Prose. Quite a unique book to my reading. I really enjoyed that. It's kind of a take on a cozy mystery. Very voicey and really good. So we'll talk more about that at the end of the month as a surprise. As well as Sacred Sins by Nora Roberts. We will talk about that as a surprise. I did finally read Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. Very charming. Definitely a hit. I'll talk more about that at the end of the month. And Where the Drowned Girls Go by Shauna McGuire. That is the next entry in her Wayward Children series that comes out in January, I believe. And I really like this one. I think it's taking the series in a a good direction. So those were all things I'll talk more about at the end of the month. In terms of things I can talk about now, so I read three Regine Abel sci-fi romances that were really good and I don't know I've just been in the mood the last couple of years really for sci-fi romance that has been sort of like my go-to comfort read or sort of just I need something fun, light, breezy during a, a busy work week and so I read three from her. I read I Married a Birdman, I Married a a Naga, which I think should have just been called I Married a Snake Man, but that's just my opinion, and Unfrozen. So I Married a Birdman and I Married a Naga are both in her I Married series that started with I Married a Lizard Man. And guys, I'm telling you, these books, like, don't sleep on them. They're really, I think, quite sweet. They're like, they're definitely playing into a campy trope and sort of like an erotic type overtone to the story since, you know, it's these aliens who are not wholly humanoid, but they're very sweet because they're all marriage of convenience stories and they inevitably have pretty plucky smart heroines who are coming into this foreign alien culture and in these marriage like arranged marriages or marriages of convenience that they're both just kind of trying to make it work and uh, the heroes are not like too alpha. These really read kind of like cross-cultural romances in a way that I think is really just it feels very sort of like wholesome considering that there's also like alien peens that are you know extruding from hidden pockets. I mean, like it goes there, but then there's also this just sort of like sweetness to the story. So I will say, I think of the three in the series so far, I married a Naga worked for me the least just because I wasn't really sure that I bought the characters together. I like the characters individually, but I wasn't totally sold on their, you know, chemistry. But I think I Married a Lizard Man and I Married a Bird Man are both really good. I gave both of those four stars. And actually, when I say I preferred I Married a Bird Man or I Married a Lizard Man, maybe I, I might prefer I Married a Bird Man now that I'm thinking about it. Um, basically, in that one, there's a marriage of convenience because this human colony needs to have an alliance with the local population who are all these bird-like aliens. They're trying to protect against this other native population that is trying to destroy the humans and like enslave them. So yeah, I thought that the action in that one was pretty good. I thought that the bad guy who was also interested in the heroine, I liked the journey that character took. So that was good. And then Unfrozen is basically these aliens that are kind of almost like golems or it's kind of hard to explain. They're almost like clock 
clockwork or mechanical golems, but they're aliens. And our heroine is being held in the spaceship where she's having like awful tests done on her content warnings for violence at the beginning. That was a lot. But they basically the ship crash lands on this planet. She stumbles up ha uh, across this civilization where most of them are essentially going into like permanent hibernation because they need to get part of their heart or part of their like being back to be fully sentient and fully awake again. So the heroine has like the supernatural ability, which is why she was having these tests done on her and she's gonna like help them do that. I don't think that this one writing wise is as strong, but I, there's still that sort of like very sweet element to the story. The wholesomeness to it is still there. And uh, I did really like the characters together ultimately. So plot wise, I felt like this one dragged a little bit, but overall, it was still pretty good. Sorry, card filled up and I don't totally remember where I was, but I think I had finished talking about Regine Abel and I was gonna move on. So next one I'm gonna talk about is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. And I'm only gonna mention that this has failed my three strikes and you're out rule, which is I have now tried three different times to read this. I can never get through it. It's not, I don't think this is a bad book, but I think the writing style in this is just like not for me. For whatever reason, the voice in this is not hitting my reading ear right. And so the writing is just a no-go for me. Now I did read and enjoy, not Crooked Kingdom, whatever, Six of Crows, there you go. I, I read and enjoyed that one. I don't think I like that one as much as a lot of other people seem to, but I did enjoy that. So I don't think that I can never like Lee Bardugo, but I don't think I like this. I'm really bummed because I pre-ordered this brand new hardback and I'm just totally DNFing it so I feel wasteful but them's the breaks it's part of the process of you know reading books sometimes you like them sometimes you don't so DNFing this and I'm gonna unhaul it. Then what else did I read? Oh I read Girls Weekend by CM Nacosta who is the author of the infamous Morning Glory Milking Farm, which took the internet by storm, which took TikTok by storm this summer uh, that I very much enjoyed. I, re I really, really like that one. Um, I will say, I don't think this book is as successful as Morning Glory Milking Farm. The world is still very interesting. And I think it was an interesting project. Basically, it's taking the structure of kind of a chiclet type story where we're following three different heroines who are all fae of some kind. I think they're elves, like different types of elves. And uh, they're going on this girls weekend to this infamous <laughs> nudist colony where there's a bunch of orc dudes who are just naked all the time. And they're going, they're essentially going there to get laid. Um, and it's following each of these women as they are having different encounters. This one is definitely quite erotic in places. I think the problem with this is that when you have three different point of views and three different sort of storylines, you're inevitably setting yourself up to potentially not like all of those storylines. And I definitely had one that I vastly preferred over the other two, one that I didn't much care for and one that I was just sort of in the middle on. So the one that I enjoyed, which I think her name was L'Oreal, I actually quite liked that. And it reminded me quite a bit of the dynamic that we see in, see in Morning Glory Milking Farm to some degree. So I really liked that one, but the others weren't as successful, but I kind of commend her again swinging for the fences this was not like just another paranormal romance type book like really had a high premise that didn't totally deliver for me but was still pretty successful all things considered like I think it's still worth reading um, I just liked some parts of it better than others and then ooh, what else oh okay I read Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins I think is the author this is a thriller that comes out in January and I will tell you that if you are like me and you love an isolated close circle mystery or thriller I think this is one that's definitely worth picking up because I think it is actually an isolated closed circle thriller, which they catfish us on that a lot. A lot of times the back of the cover will sound like it is going to be an isolated closed circle mystery. And then it turns out that it is not. In this case, it definitely is. And I really enjoyed that piece of it. Now, this was an interesting, and we'll talk more about this with the maid at the end of the month with that as a surprise. I could have put Reckless Girls as another surprise because it did make me think about the fact that I am pretty forgiving of a mystery or a thriller that has an ending that I personally don't love as long as I feel like it's well executed. And particularly in Reckless Girls, I don't know what happened in this book, but I feel like at about the 66, 75-ish percent mark, the writing itself took a downturn. I don't know why that would be, but it did 
take to I don't know maybe other people who read this or in the future when you do read this let me know if you agree I didn't really see any other reviews that mentioned this I think I saw one other one who also felt this way because I was like is this it's just just me I don't know but I felt like the writing itself took a turn at the end and actually the kind of substance of the ending I was mostly okay with oh I should tell you what this one is even about basically the setup for this is that um there's a guy and a girl who are kind of stuck in Hawaii because they're like big yacht thing got a big hole in it and they need to make money so that they can fix it and keep going on their round the world cruise. She is not well off. He is very well off. That's how he has this boat. He's sort of like a little rich boy who's sort of like playing poor kind of a thing. There's a lot of commentary about class and wealth in this that I actually thought was pretty, pretty darn successful. But anyway, they get a commission or they get like hired to take these two women to this remote island where there's other people. There's like three other people staying on this island for ambiguous reasons. This island has sort of a notorious reputation to it. And then they're all there together and, you know, spookiness, mysteriousness, murderousness ensues. So the actual substance of the ending wasn't necessarily exactly where I would have wanted it to go, but it was, I was okay with it. But the execution of it, I just didn't feel like was as well done. Two thirds to 75 ish percent thought were pretty well done. Um, but then it just took a dive. I don't, I don't know why that is. And maybe that's just me. I don't know. But I do still think if you like that trope, it's definitely worth seeking this one out because I do think that it actually delivers on the promise of the premise. I will say also thematically the very last like epilogue to it I did not like because I think it took the themes in a direction that I did not appreciate, enjoy, or think added to the book. So there's also that. But anyway, all that to say, I do think this is one worth uh, seeking out. It comes out in January. Um, if you like that kind of a trope, it actually is that trope. Let's see. I think the only thing we've not talked about is Brazen Virtue by Nora Roberts. So I read both of the DC Detective duology back to back. This is the second one. And there, I actually read this one first, not realizing it was a duology. <laughs> so I wish that I had read Sacred Sins before I read this one, though they're not wholly interconnected. I just think I would have flowed a little bit better if I'd read this one second. I read this one though, because I had it in physical form and because this is getting adapted with Alyssa Milano in the lead role. This is one of her very earliest romantic suspenses. I think that it actually holds up pretty well for genre fiction of that era. There is an element to this book that rang a little off to me. And that's the fact that, so the setup for it is, is that there are these two sisters. One is a very successful author and she's flying in to spend some time with her newly separated sister who is a teacher by day, but by night to raise money to help um, with like some of her legal costs to try to get her kid back. She is a phone sex operator. So she's a kind of sex worker. Nora Roberts has a lot of themes in her books around like bad mothers. And the sister who is a phone sex worker falls into that bucket. But I think the fact that it is combined with her being a sex worker leads to some uncomfortable moments that I just don't think have aged very well 35 years later. God, yeah, almost 35 years later. I don't know. I the, so the, It's a serial killer thriller where um, somebody is killing the women who work at this phone sex place. And uh, I do actually think for the time she does a pretty good job of showing these women as true people. Just because they're sex workers doesn't mean they deserve to be killed. And she shows a lot of like kind of complex motivation as to why they may be seeking that kind of work. But anyway, so I think for the time it's actually not bad, but I think when combined with some of her themes about bad mothers, it just rings a little off to me. And uh, I will also say the romance didn't fully work for me in this one. It's between the sister who survives and the guy next door who is a police detective, who is like a 6'5 ginger, like big lumberjack dude who is very beta and very sweet. I really liked each of the characters. I just think that the romance between them was a little rushed. So overall, I enjoyed this book with some reservations. And I do think for a book of this time period, it actually holds up pretty darn well. So pleasantly surprised for the most part with this one, but didn't like it as much as I liked Sacred Sins, which we'll talk about at the end of the month. Then in her terms of what I'm reading right now, I have barely started Shield of Winter, which I need to hop on because I need to record the podcast for this. This is the 13th book in the Side Changeling series. So this is a reread. But yeah, I remember loving this one. So excited for this reread. I guess I don't have an audiobook going right now. I should probably find something to listen to. That's, <laughs> I don't have a plan for an audiobook, but I now have a plan to get a plan for an audiobook. I guess I'm not technically reading anything else. Oh, no, no, no. I am, sorry. I am reading The Mark of Athena, but 
by Rick Riordan. That is the third book in the Heroes of Olympus series. And uh, I'm about 10%, I think, of the way through that one. And then I got distracted, so I didn't come back to it. But I am reading that. We left the son of Neptune in a really interesting place that the Mark of Athena picks right back up on. And uh, there's a lot happening. So I'm excited to tuck in with that one when I get a chance to really focus. And then in terms of what I might read next, so I do have a few arcs that I want to get to that come out in January. So I have Seasonal Work by Laura Lippman. This is a collection of literary mystery short stories from Laura Lippman. Been wanting to try her, so I'm excited to get to this. A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham is a thriller that is coming out in January, and I believe it's a Secrets from the Past kind of story where um, there was either missing girls or girls who were killed in the 70s in this little Louisiana parish. The heroine grew up when that was happening, and she's like back in the town to find out what happened. This one interested me because apparently it's a debut, and it was optioned by Emma Stone for production, um, so that tells me that that probably there's something somewhat special or interesting about this particular one. We'll see. The Perfect Escape by, I think her name is Leah Conan, sounds like a potential isolated closed circle thriller where um, some friends are on vacation and then like murderousness happens. So stay tuned. I'll let you know if it's actually an isolated closed circle thriller. And then I also have an arc of the reissued romantic suspense from Stacey Abrams when she was writing under the pen name Selena Montgomery. And and that is called Never Tell. They're reissuing that, like there's a new edition of it coming out at the end of January. I'm interested to see what that one is like. I did enjoy Wild Justice Sleeps from her earlier this year, so I'm interested to see what her romantic suspense is like. In terms of nonfiction, I think actually Getting Delivered Today is a book that I heard recommended on a recent episode of Maintenance Phase, which is a podcast I absolutely love, and uh, it's called Fat, A Cultural History, I think, by Sandra Gilman, and it's basically like a history of cultural perceptions of fatness. So I am interested to read that for a commentary video that I am planning on doing in January, I think. I'm gonna read that for my next nonfiction pick. And then two other things that I'm thinking about reading, I haven't looked yet fully at the Goodreads Choice Award list, but these are two that I'm guessing are gonna be on there. And I'd kind of like to read them before voting finishes. So in romance, my guess is that Neon Gods by Katie Roberts is gonna be on that list because this was a huge hit this year and it is a paranormal or like I guess paranormal romance like urban fantasy romance kind of thing where it is set in a city that is I think called Olympus and it is based on uh, Greek myth retellings but like erotic versions and this one I think is Hades and Persephone. So I'm honestly excited to try this. Um, I'm gonna say I've, I've read a couple of things from Katie Roberts that she self pubbed and I liked but didn't love them the way that it seems like some people love her. So I'm gonna be curious to see how I do with this. I wonder if I just picked a couple of ones that aren't some of her better ones. I know people really enjoy her, so I'm, I'm curious to see how I do with this. And then another one I'm guessing is gonna be on that list is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. This one is an isolated closed circle mystery. Take a shot, every time I say that in this video, that seems to be a big theme. I'm a predictable, predictable gal. I like what I like, but this one I think is a couple who is sort of going for a retreat or like a long weekend in a cabin in the woods trying to save their marriage kind of a thing. Murderousness starts to happen. So this was really hyped up before it came out and I'm just, I have a feeling it's gonna be on the list. So I kind of wanna read this before I do like I finish all of my voting. So that is on my radar as well. I might read some more Regine Abel. God, is, is there anything else that's really on my radar right now? I mean, not really. I've got a lot of mood reading space for me these days. So we'll just see what my mood ends up being. We'll find out when I find out. So yeah, I think that that does it for this check-in. Definitely let me know what you thought of any of the books that I talked about and let me know how your reading month is going. Uh, and yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, including a link to the new merch. So check that out. And uh, yeah, I think that will do it for me. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.